Hey everybody, welcome to our lab 11. I understand that we, the last lab that we did was lab 9, but I'm considering uh, the exam data analysis lab 10, so that this is lab 11 and it's aligned with the week number, week 11, okay? All right, so the aim of this lab, we in this lab, we'll build upon the framework that we learned in previous units uh, for statistical inference like all of the same steps, right? Computing a test statistic, looking at the probability of observing that statistic under the null hypothesis, if probability is low, reject the null in favor of the alternative, interpret the results. That's the same process here, right? So we'll build upon that, but we'll learn a new method to examine differences and correlations between categorical variables, okay? Variables that are not numeric. Up to now, we've been doing inferences on the mean differences between means um, that are dependent, independent. That's what we've been doing up to now. Now we're gonna look at how to make inferences, run analysis on categorical variables. The problems that we will work on here are the exact same problems that we worked on in the lecture videos, okay? So the first problem is the jury selection issue. And I'm not going to read all of it because it was discussed in class. So if you didn't watch the class uh, video, go there and we, I, I, I go over the problem there in more details. But the question that we're trying to address here is whether there is evidence that the race distribution in the jury is different from the distribution in the population at large. We want to know if there is some selection bias in uh, when um, selecting people to participate in juries, all right? And the data that, that I obtained was from Lucas County, Ohio, and the source um, was the 1990 census data, racial representativeness of juries from the U.S. Census Bureau. Distribution of races in the population at the time was 86% more or less, white individuals, point 119, about 12% about black individuals, and 2.2% Hispanic. Now we have the, our null in our alternative hypothesis, which is the first step in any statistical analysis. Let's set up, let's transform our question into a hypothesis that can be tested, because then it becomes a scientific problem. So the null hypothesis is that the observed count of jurors from various race ethnicities follow the same ethnicity distribution in the population, so there is no difference there. And the alternative is that the observed counts of jurors from various ethnicities do not follow the same race and ethnicity distribution in the population. So we can use the chi-square test for goodness of fit uh, to determine if deviations from expected are sufficient you know, expected from the null hypothesis are sufficiently large from for us to reject the null hypothesis. So we need to first check the conditions to actually um, assume that the distribution of differences between expected, squared differences between expected and observed looks like chi-square uh, so that we can apply the chi-square test for goodness of fit. And those are two easy conditions. Each case is only counted one. Each person is counted only one time. It's only in one of the cells, okay, in the table. That tells us how many jurors are white, how many jurors are black, and how many jurors are Hispanic, okay? We don't have the same person, let's say because they're mixed race, they're being counted in two cells. That's not the case in this data set. So we're good there. And, and then each particular scenario in the cell has at least five expected cases. So when we get the tables of expected cases, if we, if we see there that there is less than five in any of the cells, then we can't run chi-square. We've checked that already in, in, in the lecture video, so we'll move on. We know the conditions are met. Um, so let's run the analysis. First of all, we load the data set. Let's load jury duty. Yes. Here's, here's a, is the data being loaded. Ignore that message. I don't know why it's showing up, but the data shows up just right. We have the counts of whites, the counts of blacks, and the counts of Hispanics. Now, 
we go on and get and run the test basically get the probability of the deviance between observed and expected counts under the null hypothesis and that counts here so to do that you're going to need the expected distributions under the expected proportions of white individuals black individuals and hispanic individuals in the population that's the only thing the only information that you will need in addition to the data set in order to run the chi-square test so here is the syntax to run it that we need to adapt for other cases i am storing the data in the the, the results of the chi-square test in the jury data chi and i'm running the chi-square test function chi dot test and what it takes is the data set name which is jury data and it takes the proportions expected under the null hypothesis and we have to put it in as a vector and remember when we create a vector in r we use this little c open parenthesis and put in the numbers so these numbers here are coming from the from the description of the data saying that the distribution of races in the population are this this and this so i got these numbers and i put it here and then we can run the test and what the output gives us is the chi-square statistic that remember that's the sum of the square deviations divided by the expected count um, it does that calculation for you it spits out the chi-square it spits out the number of degrees of freedom because it computes how many cells in your data set three minus one it computes the degrees of freedom for you and it provides you with the probability of observing that value of chi-square or larger under the null hypothesis and that's a very very low number right so our decision here is to reject the null hypothesis that the observed counts of jurors from various race and ethnicities follow the same ethnicity distribution in the population so to interpret the data however we need more than the p-value remember we need that table where we can see expected and observed counts so i'll teach you how to create that remember that we stored the data from the chi-square test in this variable called jury data chi-square and inside this jury data chi-square exists the observed counts that we that are got from the data set and the expected counts that are calculated because r can get the total of these three and uses our proportions that we give it that we give it as input to compute the expected counts so we just need to tell r to give that to us so let's tell r to give us the expected counts we're going to store in a variable called expected and we're going to say please look inside jury data chi-square and get the variable expected and we need to get the observed counts too so we so that we can compare them close by uh, open up jury data chi and get the observed counts and then i'm giving names to both um to the numbers in the expected and in, in the observed uh variable so I know that the first number will be white, the second number will be black, the third number will be Hispanic, because that's the order that shows up in our data set, white, black, Hispanic. So when I give the input to the chi-square function, I need to make sure I give the proportion of white first, and then black, and then Hispanic in the same order that they show up in the data set. So let me say this again. When I ran the chi-square test, I gave the proportion of white and then black. And then Hispanics because that's the same order that these things appear in my data set white appears first black appears second and Hispanic will be appears third so once I do that I get the p-value and I'm getting the expected and observed counts and I want them to be named on the output so I'm doing white black and Hispanic because those three are the names for both the expected and the observed and then I ask R to print both of them so if you run this, you will see the first one, the first three numbers are the expected counts of white, black, and Hispanic under the hypothesis that there is no selection bias. 
and here are the observed counts. So we can see that there are more whites in juries than expected under the law, and less black individuals and Hispanic jurors than expected under the law. So not only there is a bias in the distribution with respect to what is out there in the population at large, but what the what the difference is when we look at the expected and observed, we can say that there is not only there is evidence that the jury selection process is biased, but it's biased against black and Hispanic individuals. There is more there is a greater likelihood of a white person being selected to jury duty than than Hispanics and blacks. Okay? And I do not know that just by looking at the p value. I need to look at the expected and observed counts. Okay? Now, let's go to problem two. That's the, the one that's looking at police shooting, police shootings biases. And yes, I got it from the Washington Post. Uh, so it was data from 2015. Data shows that out, out of 1995 victims, 497 were white, 259 were black, 172 Hispanic and 67 other race. This data shows that more white individuals are killed by police than black individuals. Does these data provide evidence for the hypothesis that racial bias in police shootings is false because we see more whites being killed than blacks? Let's use the chi-square test for goodness of fit to determine whether or not we should dismiss the hypothesis of racial bias based on this data. Census data indicates that the distribution of white, black, Hispanics, and other in the population is this, okay? Now, what are the hypotheses? Age zero, you observe counts of victims from various race ethnicities follow the same ethnicity distribution in the population, so there is no racial bias. And the alternative is that the observed counts of victims from various ethnicities do not follow the same distribution in the population. So let's use the chi-square test for goodness of fit. The assumptions are the same and we met them. Um, then we run the analysis. We start by loading the data set. Let's do that. In police shootings, again, we have, look at the order, white, black, Hispanic, other. So when we do the input for the chi-square, we need to get the proportions in the population in this order. Um, disconsider that error. I don't know why it's there, but it's not doing anything bad for us. So let's get the probability of the difference between observed and expected under the null hypothesis. That difference is encapsulated in the chi-square uh, estimate. So let's, let's grab the code that we need, the base code that we need, and adapt. Same as here. Let's adapt it. Here, our data set now is called police shooting. What did we call it? Police shooting. That's the name of the data set. Let's get grab it here. The proportions that we want, we want four proportions: white, black, Hispanic, and other. Let's get it on the description of the data, and it's already in that order. It's white, black. Hispanic and other. We shooting. And let's store the results of the chi square test in something called police. Oops. Shooting chi square. Let's change the name of the object in which we will store the results to match sort of the theme of the analysis that we're doing. All right, if we click here, we'll see that deviation, 152.14, three degrees of freedom, does that make sense? Four categories, minus one, and the p-value is less than 0 0.05, way less, almost zero, right? So the decision is that we reject the null, reject the hypothesis that there is no bias. But now, to determine bias against who is going on, 
we need the table with the observed counts and the expected counts. So let's grab the code that can create these, get these numbers for us. Speed out the numbers for us. See, get observed, expected for interpretation. Let's get this and then change according to this particular scenario that we're working with. We can still call it expected and observed, though it will write over what the, the variable that was stored here before, but we're not going to use it again, so that's fine. Let's change the name of the data set, the name of the, the, the chi-square output that we are going to use because we don't want the jury data chi-square, we want the police shooting chi-square. So let's change that. And also let's change the other one for getting observed because I want R to open up the chi-square output for the police shooting data, which I called police shooting chi. Note that I copy and paste to avoid typos because if there's one little error, one less, you know, forgot to put the underscore done, used capital letter error, right? So I copy and paste to avoid it. And we're also tired that we won't see little things like that. So now I want to change the names also because I do not have only white, black, and Hispanic. I also have other. So I have four values that R is going to speed up. The observed number of white individuals that got shot, black individuals, Hispanic, and other. And here is the same. So let's change that. And then I ask it to spit out, print out things. So here is the expected number of white individuals or victims of shooting if there is no racial bias, if shootings were happening in proportion to what goes on in the population in terms of race. And here is the number of white individuals that are being shot. So less than the expected if shootings were happening kind of randomly across races. Um, and in terms of the black individuals, you have more shootings than would be expected by chance alone. So the interpretation is that there is not only evidence of racial bias in police shootings, but that this bias is specifically against the black community. I'll stop now and we'll come back um, to provide you with an example of chi square for goodness of fit. And then you will work on a last problem on your own, okay? See you then.